Let's talk to David Buick MBE. I don't know if you read in the press, but um, David is taking early retirement at um, <laughs> the tender age of, I won't even ask him. 73, David. but my, that's why it's not tender. <laughs> Morning to you, Moose. Um, Happy New Year to you Thank and your you family. Um, you started in the city in 1962, yep. which ironically was the year I was born. Um, what were the highs and the lows in a, in a brief summary? I think it was an incredibly exciting period because it was only 17 years after the war had finished. And I joined a merchant bank, as it was known in those days, called Philip Hill Higgins and Erlangers. And they were one of the leading accepting houses that did new issues and what we call IPOs today. And never a day really went by without either the Telegraph, the Times uh, and the FT were all broadsheets in those days, having an offer for sale page. And it generally had Philip Hill Higgins and Erlangers, if not Rothschilds, if not Schroeder Wag, if not Warburgs, if not Morgan Grenfell. But more often than not, the ship that I worked for, uh, Philip Hill Higginson, was very, very aggressive in that field under very dynamic leadership of Kenneth Keith. They paid me a pittance, so I stayed there for five years. And I think I don't more, learnt more in five years there than I've learnt in the other 50 years in right. the City of London. It was the most incredible stable for training you. And I was earning the princely sum of £950 a year. And I went out and I had a, quite a liquid lunch with a friend of mine from R.P. Martin who offered me £1,500 a year plus bonus, which in those days, even though you were paying 83% tax above 2,000 quid in those days, was a, an offer I couldn't refuse. Right. And even though my employers said, we'll up it by 50 to round you to 1,000, which I thought was very noble of them, I said no. So I got out of that way, I, I went into the world of money broking and for many years, um, I was involved in money broking, both as an employee, but more often than not, after two years as an employer at a very young age of 24. And I set up three money broking companies. And I suppose, Moose, if I could pass on my epitaph to anybody, I would tell them that the grass is not greener on the other side. I was, if, even if I say so myself, uh, quite a good builder of businesses, but an absolutely useless manager. Right. A manager uh, of people or manager of business? No, manager of businesses. No, okay. I'm a good people's man. That's the only thing I've ever really been interested in. But I don't know how to sack anybody who's useless. And unless you can do that or you know how to cut your costs, you're going nowhere fast. And that was probably my greatest weakness over the years. But I went through so many extraordinary things, pre probably starting with the um, advent of the euro dollar market which made London as a financial centre in the 70s absolutely explode. And at the end of the 70s, there were 300 trading banks in London. I mean, what are they now? 60, if you're lucky. And because they're big, large institutions. And then that followed up, really, with people to start talking to you about Big Bang and stuff like that. Big Bang was a relatively small event because what really welcomed people to the city of London was Margaret Thatcher and... Geoffrey Howe, I think it was, was the, the Chancellor at the time, making the abolition of exchange controls. you probably forgotten because you weren't even hardly a twinkle in your father's eye, but you could only take 50 quid out of the country. And, you know, you couldn't bring anything in. The doors were open. London is open for business. For me, that was the biggest event in my life, right. without any question. Big Bang was very, very important. The other thing during the Thatcher years was the change, basically, of your earning power. You were going to be taxed on your spending power, i.e. VAT, but not on your earning power. So the cut in taxation for a middle-class boy like me from 83% to 60% in 1984 and down to 40% in 1986 was fundamental because you could actually accumulate capital. Of course, with Big Bang, which came in 1986, came the fact that the Chinese walls were up and there was no insider trading, which most of the people in the city of London made their money because there was no capital gains then in those days. Well, that was put in. But the whole system and culture and change of taxation was fantastic. Right. And then, of course, we had Big Bang, which really basically sorted the wood from the trees. The Americans came in with their hobnailed boots, plus the old Swiss and the old German. And here we were in London with virtually all the merchant banks either taken over or making a very poor fist of it. I suppose you could congratulate Barclays, Barclays de Zoutwez as it was then, it was the gilt market maker and the equity market maker, and they did pretty well for quite a long period of time. But they never really knocked the rock, as they say, 
Hill Samuel, which eventually came out of Philip Hill Higgins Fellows, they went into TSB, was demolished into virtually nothing. Uh, Montague, as we know, Samuel Montague went into Midland. Yep. And Midland, of course, was bought by HSBC and so on and so forth. So actually, the UK banks, even though we had the systems here, didn't really thrive. They really thrived under the Bankers Trust, the JP Morgan Chase, the Goldmans, the Salomon Brothers, the Citigroups, the Chase Manhattan, as it was in those days, Deutsche Bank, those kind of UBS, Swiss Bank Corporation, those were the real high flyers. And their mud business just boomed after that. Uh, and that was one. And then the low, I suppose, obviously, like everybody else, was 2007 8, when it became clear that there was a subprime lending crisis yeah. and a domestic uh, interest rate crisis here, or credit crisis in this country, which trashed the economy worldwide, creating hundreds of thousands of people unemployed, it was a deeply depressing state of disrepair. Horrible, horrible. To have gone through that again, I think, was very difficult and very, very hard. On a personal basis, clearly the worst day of my life was, um, uh, was the 9-11, was the 11th of September, obviously working for Cantor Fitzgerald, Stroke Cantor Index, Stroke, you know, those companies, to see 630 yeah. of your colleagues in the North Tower of the World Trade Center bite the dust yeah. in the most appalling manner was the most moving and the most horrifying thing that ever probably happened to me. Mm. But, there are no buts because that will always be with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. But I have to say that I've had it so good because we've lived in a period uh, between when I was born in 44 up until today when we've known no world war. We've had no real destitution. Um, life's been very, very good. It was very easy to get a job in the 60s. If you got sacked or you weren't good enough, you found another one. Uh, today, I feel sorry for the kids. Um, yep. I think they have a very rough ride. I think um, Mr. Blair, if I may say so, got the situation horribly wrong with education, 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 as a result of which far too many people go to, uh, go to university and don't go to technical colleges where they could get a really good job. And they come out of it disappointed and depressed, can't get on the housing market. I mean, 26,000 a year working for an insurance company as a clerk, and they've got a really good university degree. Most that's not fair. And yeah. I was never subjected to that. I think, for me, the, the, the open outcry stock markets, the life law, for example, it had the opportunity for people who were not educated to go down there as rummers, as yellow jackets, as trainees to be part of the city. And I don't see in this generation the happened. entry level. You've, you've got to be at a certain standard of education to even go near a bank. But I'm and the I same as you. I never passed an exam in my life. I never got an A level. I my do father, have 14 letters after my name. Yeah, my, well, there you are. It's more than I've got. You know, but I mean, my uh, father was appalled at me. He wanted yeah. me to be a corporate lawyer. And he said, you'll have to go merchant banking. Yeah. I said, how laughable is that today? I feel very sorry for the young. Yeah. I think the uh, opportunities are not there to the degree that they were there for us. And I think the fact that regulation now is so tough uh, that it's going to make very difficult. I think this introduction of this MIFID uh, regulation is going to make it very difficult. It took seven years, apparently, to prepare that paperwork. 1.7 million paragraphs, I think. I know. Just to wrap up, what mm. does retirement bring for you? Excitement. Cricket? Excitement. Um, hopefully, a little bit of temporary work that I'm working on. Um, one day a week, which will suit me very well, and then my love of my six grandchildren, and then I, of course, got my national hunt racing, and I've got my cricket, and it's a season ticker of the season ticket holder of Fulham, and that's a pretty full life to me, and a lovely wife, so I'm in good shape. Well, let's just leave on the Fulham note. Any chance of playoffs? Three points away from the playoffs, we are now. And playing well? Playing quite well. We've got uh, <laughs> a nice game on Saturday, but now we should beat them, and that will make me feel very good. David, as always, thank you for your time. Great Happy pleasure. Retirement. Thank you.